Okay, greetings. Again, my name is Jesse. And I've been doing these video essays. Now I have decided uh, to go ahead and uh, do as many as possible because I do believe that the um, information is necessary and that we live in a world of uh, turmoil and stress and realistically speaking there is no reason for any person to be subject to this kind of stress and to be living a life that is um, completely unattractive to them. The subject today is on marriage <coughs> um, and again I apologize the more I speak the more I cough and let me see here so as I've been writing articles as I have been posting video essays I've, I've honed down a certain life philosophy and when I started um, structuring the conversation in this video <coughs> at least what I would be saying uh, I realized in marriage things really began uh, before the person is in a marriage relationship that is why um, I have started the conversation with with the individual as a healthy person what does it take to make a healthy person um, there's a lot that contributes to our personality formation um, whether we're a quiet person whether we're a shy person whether we're an angry person whether we're a person who's always upset who has anger management problems or even has a serious um, psychological issues. Uh, I'm not a person that believes that you throw human beings into the garbage can. If you're a person who happens to have any manner of psychological illness, you can be a source, a resource in your own healing, in your own treatment. We have to recognize that in our modern world, and really throughout the human history, a lot of attention has been paid to the negative. If you want to be a person of God and recognize that the negative is the influences of Satan and his, and his uh, angels, you can do so. If you want to be a person of science, you still have to recognize that our attitudes are formed by the information that we acquire from our environment. In our modern technological world, a lot of our information comes from media, from radio, from television, from movies, not so much magazines, but still magazines, newspapers, web pages. Now you have to include uh, web pages into the conversation. And it's not a surprise to me that a lot of people formulate a very negative attitude, and that negative attitude co contributes to uh, any manner of psychosis. Therefore, when you're talking about a marriage, you first have to look at the individual, you have to look at the husband and you have to look at the wife and one or both can have issues and those issues can interfere in the ability of forming that marriage bond that that structure of trust and intimacy and love and romance and passion and even of sexuality so if you want to have an honest conversation you just cannot say well it's all the woman's fault and by all means you cannot say that well it's all the man's fault you have to recognize that both individuals are unique individuals and they come into the marriage partnership with the possibility of many mental health issues existing. Now, the what I want to call a philosophy, and of course this is where I add my disclaimer because I don't want to fight with Christians. Psychology is not a new religion. In my opinion, psychology is medicine. And it's just another um, or just another device, another tool, another resource that God has lent us uh, so we can uh, take care of ourselves and try to live the best life that we can. Because after all, he said, I have come so you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. If you're suffering from depression and you're suffering from anxiety and you find no resources to help you, you know, the, the, the other side uh, of, of the... Uh, of the mountain is actually getting some structured therapy and I, I am not competing with Christianity I'm not competing with God I'm just offering the wisdom that he has lent me 
Now, you can choose a negative, and that negative will lead you to negative attitudes, which consequently will lead to psychological issues. But you can also practice what I call positive ideation. And in positive ideation, instead of going to the negative, you choose the positive. And choosing the positive is not existing in some kind of smurf, la 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 fantasy land. It's being realistic. Oh, I, uh, hold on, I gotta add that to it. That, that's part of being positive. Of course, the beginning is how you think, how you perceive life. If something happens to you, do you automatically give it a negative connotation, a negative meaning, and consequently feel the emotions associated with giving it that negative meaning? Or are you able to put things in perspective and get a healthy perspective of what has occurred. All of us are going to agree that losing a loved one, um, uh, also divorce, uh, losing a career, uh, financial hardship, uh, being a single parent stressed out with two jobs, all of us are going to agree that these are bad things. However, they're real. And our choice is either to look at what is real, to look at reality in a negative perspective, and again, consequently feel the emotions associated with being negative, or to put things in a positive perspective. See, one of the things positive about, <coughs> uh, let me take two issues, divorce. One of the positive things in divorce is that you have learned who is not convenient for you in a romantic relationship. Now, that's not the real message that you should get out of it, because if, if I go into detail, what you really should learn is that you're not equipped to be in a marriage. If I sat down with most most couples, uh, whether they divorced or separated or whatever the case may be, that broke up, uh, they're not going to like me much because I'm going to tell them the reality is that your partner is not the reason for the divorce. You're the reason for the divorce. And the reason you're not equipped is because of these kind of attitudes, which consequently leads to these kind of behaviors, which lead to these kind of emotions. Negative emotions will lead to conflict and strife and distress within the marriage. So being positive, okay, putting things in perspective. The positive of divorce is you're no longer in an unhealthy relationship which is harming you. Not only is it harming you mentally, it is harming you physically because stress, I have said it before, stress is a killer. So if you're in a relationship that is constantly giving you stress, you're in a relationship where you're, you're causing yourself physical harm as well as mental harm. Okay, Now, thinking positive is focusing on what's good in life. Okay? And yes, we go through life and we go through things we wish we wouldn't experience, but we have to find what's good in life. Okay, And being what's good in life is that we, can be, we have hope for the future, which means we are optimistic. All right? Now, I know one of the biggest things, one of the biggest issues, I'm going to stop here, go into it in a little bit of detail here. I know that there's a lot of angst, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering. Uh, I started studying psychology because of my fascination with how humans think and how humans uh, function. And as a result of that, I have seen that a lot of people, People who many would identify normal are actually going through some very severe pain and suffering, so some serious hurt. And I've spoken with people who have <coughs> told me about their experiences in, in therapy, whatever that therapy manifest, however that therapy manifested itself. And I'm not surprised that people with PhDs engage in therapy, counseling, psychotherapy are not able to help their clients because they're not called patients, they're called clients in less than six months. Because the field itself is, it is a science but it's illness based. And it's illness based as far as reading the tea leaves. I have honest conversations with people. And I tell them, look, throughout your life you have gathered these negative attitudes and these negative attitudes are contributing to your behaviors and consequently your behaviors contribute to your emotions. 
see, in, in my psychological paradigm, it's thoughts, emotions, sensations, and behavior. And behavior that it's, it's unpleasant, unattractive, uh, uh, undesired. It happens and it brings about emotional turmoil. You don't want to drink too much, to excess. You don't want to use drugs. You don't want to keep going through meaningless sexual relationships, but you continue to do it. And that, okay? So, <coughs> because there are people who are, who I know, I know in the world, it, there's a lot of pain and suffering and li very few resources for individuals to get assistance. Therefore, I started producing these videos. Granted, it's been a long time, I mean, 2000 to now. But then again, my life has been a very serious, uh, it's like I'm in combat mode every day, but finally got the time. And the message is, it's a good message that you are in control of your thoughts. And because you're in control of your thoughts, you're in control of your emotions and your sensations, and consequently you're in control of your behaviors. And it is a simple statement, you can think yourself positive, but it's a true statement. We can think ourselves positive. We can focus on what's good in life. And we can look and search and use what is good in life to benefit us. Okay, And you have to be optimistic because you have to believe in yourself. And you believe in yourself, let me see here, I wrote this down. Well, I know it's by heart. We believe in ourselves because we know ourselves to be valuable people because we have values. See? So when you're going around feeling bad about yourself, stop and think. And stop and think of your um, your personal qualities. Your sympathy, your empathy, your love for your neighbor, you know, uh, your concern for pets. You do have a lot that qualifies as a good person. You should see yourself as a good person because you do have value. We have value because we have values. Okay? Here we go. Run right through it, but and all of this should give you hope. Believing in yourself, in your ability to control your thoughts and control your emotions and sensations by controlling your thoughts and controlling your behaviors by controlling your thoughts, which control your emotions and sensations, which lead to behaviors. Now, there's a greater paradigm in human psychology that jumps outside the simple paradigm of thoughts, emotions, sensations, and behavior. There's a lot more that is attached to it in any different direction. But what we're talking about is building a self-concept of an individual who can believe in him or herself because they know that they can think. Evaluate information. Evaluate that information in a positive way. Take what is good out of it and use what is good. Pursue what is good. See, that is when we, that's why we're empowered. We're empowered because we can think, organize, plan, and act. We have that, those mental capacities. We don't use them. We're not trained to use them. And we need to start training ourselves. Every day I have to remind myself to be happy. Every day I have to remind myself to look for what's good in life. To enjoy the music that I enjoy. To read what I enjoy to read. To only, only interact with people whose company I enjoy. And the people whose company I enjoy are people who are of my nature. Who are health-based who are positive based, who are optimistic, who are hopeful, who are not spending their day trashing everything. If you spend your day, you personally trashing everything, you're going to develop a negative attitude. If you spend your day surrounded by people who are trashing everything, you're going to develop a negative attitude. So you have to remind yourself to focus on what's good. Okay? Realism. Part of positive ideation is being realistic, but it's not being morbid realistic, where you sit around and you look at everything and say, I, I have garbage. No, you have a lot of stuff, and it's a lot of good stuff, and it's all inside you. Your ability to think, organize, plan, and act. Your ability to focus on what's good. Your ability to take what's good in life, friendships, relationships with family members, hobbies, interests. What I call simple pleasures of life. Let me see. Am I that? I'm looking down here in my notes because I want to make sure I don't forget it. Okay. <coughs> Setting goals and objectives. Okay. When you start 
restructuring your life because your life is not appealing to you. It's not attractive. You're tired of it. You're, you're, you're just you're just tired of the monotony, the same thing over and over and over again. L let me speak clearly to you. Your employment is not the problem. I'm even going to go out and say that your marriage is not the problem. We are our own worst enemies because our culture has taught us to be negative. And negativity is an illness. But there's something internal telling us to, to pursue something better. And the better is what I call positive ideation. Enjoying what you have, being grateful for what you have, and enjoying what you have. That's the realist, realistic part. Not a morbid realism, but a balanced realism where you are grateful for what you have and you enjoy what you have. Okay. Now, in setting goals and objectives, each time you have a personal accomplishment, if you're not happy with your career, if you're not happy with your romantic relationship, if you're not happy with relationships with your brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, if you're not happy with friendships, you're smart enough to sit down and say this is what I'm going to do this is what I have to do so I'm okay in the situation see um, happiness is not an absence of sadness an absence of sadness is freedom from pain but not necessarily happiness happiness is an active process you have to be doing something that makes you happy you have to be listening to, uh, if, you're, if you like comedy, you have to be listening to comedy. It makes you laugh. If you like certain types of music, you have to be listening to the type of music that makes you happy. Happiness is an active process. Okay? Every time we set a goal, and we, we set a goal as we're saying that I'm going to sit down and have an honest, hard, one-to-one -one conversation with my romantic partner and speak of these issues as a mature adult without getting angry and you accomplish that goal you gain confidence the more confidence you get the more you believe you can accomplish things and the more you believe in yourself the more your self-esteem grows okay <coughs> how far am I let me see here okay so we go through this whole process of reevaluating our, our life Understanding that we're spending too much time in the negative and we need to spend more time in the positive. Restructuring our thoughts to positive thoughts, which allow us to focus on the good, which allows us to start feeling good about ourselves, having confidence, having hope. Now we're at a point where we are dealing with our issues in a positive perspective, actually being active and solving the issues of our life. We can start living. And what I call a uh, pursuing simple, healthy pleasures of life in a 24-hour day cycle. Okay, every day you you should be uh, engaged in things that make you happy. There, the human being works needing to be aware of his or her environment, but only to the extent that we assess real threats and unreal threats uh, anxiety when I talk to people who have anxiety you know I tell them you know very simply simplistically anxiety just means you're afraid of something anxiety means fear so what are you afraid of people don't like to be told that they're afraid of something but that's the reality of it now <coughs> the question is important because is it a real fear or is it an imagined fear an irrational fear, what we call a phobia. A real fear, you deal with it. It's a real fear that you got paid today, and if you don't get that money into the bank today, a whole bunch of your checks are going to bounce. That's a real fear. That's something you have to deal with. Let's say something happened to you. I'm not going to identify what happened, but you were victimized in one way or another. But that person who victimized you is nowhere near you right now but you're still afraid of that see? that's an irrational fear because the source that you're afraid of is no longer in your life now 
it is important to know that because you can start putting things in perspective. I happen to believe in health and I know I know what the worst possible experiences people can experience are. I'm not living in a, like I said, in a Smurf La La Land. However, we have the ability to put things in perspective and ask ourselves, is this thing that we're afraid of a real fear or is it something we're creating in our head? I believe in self-defense. I believe in using all the resources available to us, the law, pepper spray, tasers, handcuffs, you know, ha firearms to defend ourselves. Um, I was watching a movie, I can't remember what it was, but it's quoting some guy, and I've always said, you know, the thing that was quoted in the movie is what I have always said. I've always said that the strongest muscle in my body is my mind, my brain. And, and we have the ability to think and we have the ability to think in a manner that is beneficial to us. Now, there's a lot of people who choose illness as a crutch, as a means of being special, getting the attention of people, and as a means of not having to do, not having to meet the responsibilities of life. That's perfectly fine for them if that's what they want to do. I would say that's a waste of life. I would rather work and earn my way through life than to be limited by the the measly amount that government offers, but that's me, okay? So you go through all this, and you get to a point in your life when you're focusing on making sure that your 24-hour day cycle is filled with a lot of healthy, simple pleasures that give you joy, that bring you peace, that bring you love, and that contribute to good mental health, okay? Now, in a marriage, it'd be great if both people were practitioners of what I call positive ideation, which is everything that I just explained. That would be great, because that means that they're happy people, and they're able to interact with each other as happy people, they're being re be respectful, and that's one of the big things. Uh, um, somebody I knew once asked me, a very long time ago, asked me, uh, what do you think is the secret to a successful marriage? And I told that individual, it is the, Patience and tolerance to accept your partner for who they are. You may have an idea of what you would like your partner to be, your romantic partner, your marriage partner. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to jump in line and do everything that, you're, that you believe should happen. But when you're a happy person, you're practicing positive ideation, you're focusing on what's good, you're setting goals and objectives, you're, you're working towards personal accomplishments, and that's building your confidence and your self-esteem, um, you're a type of person who's attractive, who's attractive to other people. There was a person in my life, <clears throat> and her smile, her eyes, her laughter, I realized when I was setting some notes for, I can't remember if it was an article or video, it doesn't matter, but I realized that that my uh, that, that I made her laugh so much because of selfish interest, because her laughter brought me joy. I like to see her happy. That was part of why I made her laugh, but in reality I was making her laugh because her laughter made me happy, so it was sort of a selfish interest. But as a personality, she is a very attractive person. She's the type of person that people want to hang around with. Our society destroys a lot. Our, our society, it, I bet you that, that if, I, if I tell everybody, I will not, I will not read my critics. I'll write an article and I won't bother to read the commentary. One, because I don't think people can think at my level and their criticism is, is rather, well, it's uninformed. <laughs> just not to be, just so I'm not offensive. And I'm not here to tell everybody I'm the smartest person on the planet. I'm just here to offer some assistance, some, some guidance into how people can live a life as an individual and in a group that is actually enjoyable. It doesn't have to be a morbid existence. That's a fallacy. Everybody's running around thinking that there's no answers. There are answers. And we have the answers inside of us. I'm not telling you anything that you don't know. I'm just reinforcing issues you know, hoping 
that you will start practicing them because when you start practicing them your pain and suffering will diminish there's a rule of psychology that when you stop paying attention to pain and you start paying attention to pleasure excuse me I got one of my computer systems down Oof. when you pay attention to happiness and pleasure you're experiencing happiness and pleasure when you focus on negativity and pain you experience pain and suffering the goal is to be free of pain and to experience pleasure it's simple psychology I mean it's not unfortunate that psychology has so simplified terms uh, that it really is simplistic the reality is that we're trying to avoid pain and we're trying to experience pleasure now it has to be healthy when I first well for a long time I've been using the term sim uh, simple pleasures of life and I realized that I had to add healthy pleasures of simple healthy pleasures of life because some of some people's simple pleasures of life are very unhealthy in my opinion marijuana use is very unhealthy in my opinion crack heroin alcohol abuse are very unhealthy uh, sexual promiscuity is unhealthy uh, I've met people who brag about it and I think it's a sad existence you get to be 70 years old in life and if you died right then and there nobody would go to your funeral because you haven't invested in anything but sex drugs and rock and roll there's more to life there's a balance in life see <coughs> when I developed a, a video on depression and I've done it before I really don't have to do it again I think I've covered all the issues on depression it's, it's just trying to get people to listen however one of the biggest reasons that we have uh, that depression is what it is today in the modern world is because we don't know how to live uh, there's a vulgar retort that says get a life but in reality that's what has to happen in order to start feeling to start experiencing pleasure we do have to get a life we do have to have relationships with friends we do have to have relationships with family brothers and sisters aunts and uncles we do have to have that special person in our lives we have we need there's a need we are built to pursue hobbies and interests and we are built in a manner that if we're doing the same thing over and over and over again we're going to get bored and that boredom is going to bring us pain all of this fits into marriage because I was starting with the individual and then trying to make the point that both people are not the same one of the individuals may have serious mental health issues both people may have mental health issues but they wouldn't qualify them they wouldn't get diagnosed with a, with a psychological illness a lot of what we learn through our interactions with people is to develop attitudes and attitudes that are wrong uh, problems in marriage I mean if you're gonna do a, a, a video on how to have a healthy marriage or about marriage you have to focus on what are the problems and from we all from all the talk shows and everything that we see even our, through our own personal experiences we can sit down and say well there's obviously a conflict of personalities one person is shy the other person is outgoing one person is good with money, the other person isn't good with money. One person know, knows how to communicate in a respectful manner, the other person results to insults. You know, there's obvious problems with personalities. And the reason being is that not all people are the same. As we interact with society, we develop attitudes. And we use these attitudes in our relationships. And also you have to take into account that you may be a person who succeeded in romance maybe you didn't marry the first person you fell in love with but at least you were able to walk through the the, the um, challenges in the relationship in a healthy manner where you learn some healthy strategies and you develop some healthy attitudes that might not necessarily be the case for your partner okay I know for a fact that 90 percent of people are not practicing positive ideation and are subject to the negative negative energy in society so they're developing a lot of negative attitudes 
Most people don't even understand what a marriage is. I am surprised when I, I talk to people because of the business that I'm in. It's uh, people-centered, not because I deal with mental health issues. I don't, I'm, I don't go to office. I'm not a caseworker, but I have an opportunity. I've always had an opportunity to talk to people and everything that I've ever done. And I'm surprised that when when you have husband and wife, you know, and people do this. I don't know why they do this, but they'll make references, you know, to the relationships. And you get an understanding that they're not happy people. And I'm the kind of person who has meditated on the issues of life so much that all I need to hear is a couple of key words and I already know the story. You don't have to tell me anymore. I can tell you your own story by maybe 10 or 11 words that you say to me. And I ask people, okay, define marriage for me. So I'm asking you, if you're having problems in your marriage and you're looking for answers, define marriage for me. Usually I spend my time waiting because people don't know what to answer. They think that I'm asking that I'm asking a specific that I'm asking for a specific answer and they're self-conscious about giving the wrong answer. Or they don't have an actual understanding of marriage. Marriage is a partnership of intimacy. That's what you're getting involved in. That's the that's what you're signing at the bottom line for. You're signing saying that you're going to give your marriage partner all the hugs your marriage partner needs. You're going to give your marriage partner all the kisses your marriage partner needs. You're going to give your marriage partner all the embraces your marriage partner needs. You're going to give your marriage partner all the sexual, healthy, one man, one woman activity that your partner needs. It's a contract of intimacy. It's a connection. Um, the person who I said that, that that influenced me a lot, the great personality that I used to like love to make laugh because her laughter would make me happy. Um, she once said that marriage was a fusion of souls, which at that time I scoffed at because I'm a realist. And I know that it's a nice ideal, but it's an ideal achieved by very few people. But the reality is that it is a fusion of souls. But if you're fusing two negative souls together, all you're doing is doubling the negative energy. So, you have to understand that you're there for more than just paying bills, washing dishes, doing the laundry, taking the kids to the whatever school activity is necessary. You're there as the number one source of intimacy with conversation, with humor, with activities, with uh, interest. You need to be interested in your partner's life. And that means that you have to be of the same spirit. Maybe you weren't of the same spirit. Maybe you're there at 11 years and saying, this is garbage, I don't wanna be in this anymore, it's time for divorce. Let me go ahead and give you fair warning. Once you spend a lot of time with a person, even if you think that person's an ogre, you become emotionally attached to that person. And breaking those emotional bonds are going to bring you more pain and suffering than staying in that relationship that you believe is torturing you. Stop and think right now. Are you a person of positive ideation? Or are you a run-of-the-mill, what I call a run-of-the-mill negativist? Everything is wrong, everything sucks, nothing works, why bother? Is that your attitude in life? Your partner, your marriage partner, who is supposed to be your number one source of intimacy isn't fully responsible for your happiness. In marriage, there still has to be independent happiness. I don't have to listen to the music that my spouse listens to. I don't have to read the books that my spouse uh, reads. When I was married, I didn't much care for the television that my ex-wife liked to watch. Okay. So there is a certain degree of ind independence. However, that independence does not mean an open marriage. Uh, I don't. Under well, I understand I can do the whole psychological paradigm, which I don't want to. When I say I don't, I don't understand, is I don't understand how <coughs> you can have a bowl of healthy fruit, but choose to put your hand in the bowl of worms and crickets. I don't get that. 
and life is choice. So, from the individual, we must understand that in a marriage, the two individuals in the marriage are not alike, are not the same, don't have the same attitudes. There was a, a theory in psychology that you marry somebody like you. Don't do that. <laughs> no, don't. And there's people going around saying that opposites attract. Uh, don't do that either. <laughs> know yourself well enough to know that you are a person dedicated to a healthy life. You, you're a person dedicated to health and not illness. Okay? Know your interests. And share your interest. Okay? And be willing to participate. If your partner likes skydiving, challenge yourself. Don't, you know, you live your life. Every, right now, every parent should understand that the more you do with your children, the more that they will do as adults. Bicycling, mountain hiking, uh, canoeing, hunting, uh, you know, traveling to state fairs. <coughs> and a person needs this to be healthy. What we call introverts are letting life pass them by. Of course, some extroverts are engaged in, in, in serious consumption of pleasure and missing out on life because all they are about is consumption. Okay, so we understand that as individuals, we have to be healthy individuals. And we understand in a marriage, both people are not the same. Okay, and we understand that life itself can lead to psychological issues that may present challenges to the marriage. Needs of intimacy. I think that, well, if you're of a different spirit, if you're of a negative spirit, if you're having psychological issues, the it's going to be hard to meet those levels of intimacy uh, just because you have your own uh, mental health uh, complicated. But again, we're the answer. We can restructure our thoughts. And we can leave negativity behind and we can move towards positive ideation. Marriage is about having fun. You're not talking to your spouse, how can you have fun? <coughs> One of the simple healthy pleasures of life is a spouse. A spouse is a companion, a spouse is a source of humor, a spouse is a form of romance, of love, uh, uh, of friendship. Uh, a spouse can comfort you in your bad times and, and make you smile and laugh during the good times. A spouse is someone that can dance with you, uh, sing with you, uh, go canoeing with you, go bicycling with you, uh, enjoy breakfast, lunch and dinner. You know, somebody that can text you something funny or risque, you know, and, and make you feel good about yourself. So a spouse... Is, is one of those simple pleasures of life that you should include in your 24-hour cycle day. Okay. Now, marriage in itself. We have a weird way of organizing life because we go through the whole thing of, of well, let's, um, let's forget whether people fell in love the right way. Uh, I have admonished people a very long time that at the wrong time to look for a romantic interest is when you are in need of a romantic interest because your judgment is clouded and you tend to make poor decisions and you choose someone just to have that angst, that pain and suffering of loneliness, of not having somebody near you. Uh, you just want that to stop, but you don't necessarily make a good choice. Uh, it, it, if we sat down and interviewed the majority of marriages, it'd be evident that a lot of people didn't fall in love the right way. They acted out of desperation and they hooked into somebody just because of the pain of that loneliness and the boredom. I'm a person who happens to believe that once you're in a marriage, you're in a marriage. And your spouse is a resource and you're a resource. And both of you can leave the past behind and start walking forward to a more pleasant future. We're in control of our thoughts. <sighs> are there wounds? There always are wounds. Today, 
if I am to at some point in time include a woman in my life, I'm not going to tolerate being put down. I think one of the greatest errors that any, whether it's the man, it's the wife or the husband, is to insult your spouse in public. Oh, my husband is lazy. Oh, my wife is dirty. I, I think that's a great error. And it doesn't lead to a happy, healthy marriage. So, having moved through the individual, understanding the marriage is made of two people who are different from each other, and in that difference, there could be mental health, psychological issues that need to be dealt with that challenge the relationship. Understanding that in a marriage, you have to participate in the needs of intimacy of your partner. Husbands and wives fight over a lot of things, and the majority of what they're fighting about is, is pettiness. If, if we want it to be cliche, generically cliche, you could very easily say that the problem is that men don't pay the wife's attention and wives spend their time nagging their husbands. If we wanted to be generic and cliche, we could, be, we could do that. But these realities, which are more than cliche, exist for a reason. When a spouse, man or woman, behaves in an immature manner most of the time it's because what they're trying to say is you're not giving me the love that I need they should say that I would advise all women to go up to their husband look him in the eye and tell them I need you to make love to me right now we can't read I was going to say men cannot read women's minds but when you're slamming the kitchen cabinets and when you're not answering questions and when we're getting the cold shoulder, we have an idea. You know, we're not stupid. But no one likes to be manipulated in that manner. And it's pretty childish. Whether you want to hear it or not, it's pretty damn childish. Slamming kitchen cabinets, not answering questions, giving the cold shoulder, that sardonic look, you know, it's childish. Direct communication is better. It, it, and that sometimes needs to happen on both ends. It needs to happen on the man, man's end. It needs to happen on the woman's end. Don't ever assume that your partner can read your mind. We're very keenly adapt to observing behaviors and having an idea of what the behavior means. You don't have to be a PhD in psychology, behaviorism, psychiatry to understand. Eventually you understand the dynamics. And it is, okay, I'm going to step out on a limb here and offend a lot of women, but it's rather childish and unproductive as a woman to try to get your way by crying. It's, it is what it is. Be an adult. Two grown-ups, two mature grown-ups have to be in a marriage. And that means that they have to know how to communicate respectfully, not being insulting not being looking for conflict now I understand <coughs> I think all of us understand I know all of us understand that there are rather dysfunctional relationships where violence and aggression is present uh, you have to do what you have to do to save yourself no marriage is worth your life. No romantic relationship is worth your life. Uh, it wasn't, was it this, yeah, this year? I ran into a young girl and her friend, young, pretty, uh, being used as punching bags. Again, I'm a, I'm a, <laughs> I, I've meditated on it. I've studied it. I know it. You don't have to tell me anything. But the minute you tell me that your boyfriend smacks you around, leave him. That's going to be my answer. Leave them, leave them right then and there. Tell your family members what's going on. Make sure everybody knows. Make sure everybody knows where you're at all times of the day. And get as far away from that person as possible. Abusive personalities don't change. Abusive personalities don't change unless they're forced to change. And sometimes that change 
leads to more violence and even death. So I understand that there are serious issues beyond just generic conversation about how a man can communicate to his wife and meet his wife's intimacy needs, how a wife can communicate to her husband and meet her husband's intimacy needs, and how can there be health in the marriage by both individuals being healthy individuals and being pleasant and attractive with their personalities so each other, each one can enjoy each other's company. I know there are issues beyond that, but for this, we just keep it simple. And in reality, um, again, I'm very security orientated. I believe that if you're, <clears throat> that all of us should be prepared to defend our lives every single day of our lives. That requires exercise, that requires health, that requires studying the law, that requires uh, uh, firearm practice, going to shooting ranges. Uh, people with firearms make mistakes because they're emotional. If you're smart, you'll stay calm and you'll know you're right because you'll know the law that defends you when you have to use uh, force to defend your life. <coughs> and in that, you know, is, is being a person, again, who's focused on health and who walks away from the negativity. You can stay negative. Uh, um, developing, am developing, meditating on a program about this whole political mess. And there's a lot of people who think that the world is going to explode or chaos is going to explode and societies are going to collapse and relax. <laughs> Let me go ahead and tell you that that's not going to happen. There's going to be challenges. There's going to be pain and suffering. Uh, but uh, what was it? Uh, again, I was watching a movie and it said basically, it, oh no, it was a Christian program. And it, it, it was about security in churches. And how some people are of the opinion that, well, if you're relying on handguns and you're not relying on God and you don't have faith, you can rely on God, have faith, and have a firearm. Your ownership of a firearm doesn't mean you don't have faith. A healthy person, a person of positive ideation, thinks, organizes, plans, and acts. You evaluate the information in your environment and you come through a healthy conclusion and you act accordingly. Okay? So, what information is your marriage giving you? If you're feeling depressed, it could be because you don't have enough pleasant activities in your life. Your marriage in itself is probably not the problem. Is that you don't have enough simple pleasures in life to pursue to keep you from boredom and from not feeling pleasure. Okay? Are there other problems in the marriage? There's a lot of problems in the marriage. But again, doesn't. I could sit here and write 101 problems. It is all going to come down to the basic thing. Personal health, personal attitude, uh, and um, coping mechanisms. How, how, how do you deal with the challenges? How do you, is it a partnership? Is it two people working together? Or is it one person on this end and another person on that end? And is the, once, you, once you're married, everything else extends from the marriage okay. yeah it, once you're married everything else extends from the marriage once the movies that you watch are the movies that are part of the marriage it's no longer the movie I want to watch it's the movie we can watch I, go, I spoke of independence that's absolutely correct but once you're married your finances belong to the marriage your positive spiritual energy belongs to the marriage. Your attitudes and philosophies and your political attitudes and political philosophies belong to the marriage. Because everything is either working, it's contributing to, to a successful marriage, or it's contributing to an unsuccessful marriage. I'm gonna go I, I mean, there's a, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, there's a lot of people who should have never married. Sorry, you're married. You're obligated you're obligated to a social contract, but you're also obligated to a personal contract. Do you have integrity? 
Are you a person that's just going to jump from one relationship to the other, messing around, having a great party, and never taking into consideration anybody else? If you're that kind of a person, then you don't have integrity. And you should tell people that. You shouldn't lie to anybody. You shouldn't tell anybody you love them when all you want is sex. You didn't tell anybody that you love them if you don't understand what it means and you don't understand what the complications that come from it or that extend from it. So be an honest person. If you're in a distressed marriage, you're in a distressed marriage because your spouse is thinking what they're thinking and you're thinking what you're thinking and nobody's thinking the same thing. Selfishness, pettiness, immaturity. There's a lot of problems in marriage. And it's gonna be my way or the highway. That's a very bad attitude in a marriage. And people don't wanna to be told their truth. Before you start evaluating your spouse, evaluate yourself. Ask yourself if you have your independent interests that give you pleasure, that help you be happy, that are healthy, where you're focused on the good, where you're achieving personal, where you're having personal achievement, where you're growing in confidence, when your self-esteem is growing. If all of that is there, and you're an actual, you're a person dedicated to having a, a pleasant, enjoyable life, all of, if all of that is there, then you can go ahead and evaluate your spouse. But the admonition that I tell people is, don't behave like a quality assurance manager with a little clipboard uh, making a notation of everything that is wrong everything that you think is wrong with your partner yesterday when I did this video great now it's blurred okay hopefully it will fix itself but the message is what is important you can walk away from the video and just listen to the message um, but yesterday I was saying I was in the video essay that I made that the computer ate, I was talking about how you can be manipulative with psychological elements, psychological resources and tools. And I was talking about how, and sometimes I'll tell people who tell me about their distressed marriage, I tell them, listen, I'm going to hire you as my account executive. And if there's one person who's the most important account to me. And I want you to keep that account, that business partner, happy no matter what. Uh, if I gave you that job and your spouse was the person I was talking to, how would you go about keeping that account for me? How would you go about keeping your spouse happy? Now you're gonna tell me, well, uh, uh, I got to meet all their immature, petty demands. No, you don't. You have acquired the attitude that their demands are immature and petty. You need to reevaluate that attitude. Needing to be held, needing to be talked to, needing to be hugged and kissed, needing sexual activity from your marriage partner, it's not immature and petty. And, okay, uh, self-consciousness in marriage. We do feel judged. We want to meet the expectations of our marriage partner. What in our world is... Oh, sometimes I just, I just don't, don't want to. I'll figure it out later. Probably another video down the drain. Okay, there is self-consciousness in marriage. There are people who believe they're being judged. Um, I scolded somebody because of their paranoia. The word of psychology uh, is paranoid schizophrenic. Uh, you shouldn't be in a marriage where you believe your partner has a negative attitude to you and is constantly trashing you. That's unhealthy. If you need to, you need to get out. You're jealous. That's a big problem in marriage. Jealousy. Sometimes the jealousy extends to violent aggression. It can even lead to death. I just read something in the morning. People in Hollywood, uh, husband killed the wife and killed himself. You know, there, there's things of dysfunction in marriage like jealousy, self-consciousness. 
on <coughs> an inability inability to communicate. Um, what, what am I thinking? Here? Emotions. Uh, I used to. I still call them marshmallow men. They have no muscles. They're wimpy, and they don't know how to communicate their emotions. Your spouse wants to hear if you're happy or you're sad. Wants to hear you laugh. Okay. So you have things that are of, of a personality nature that lead to distress in marriage uh, that have to do a lot with ourselves because of how we uh, experience life. Yesterday in the video that uh, Peter ate, I said that a lot of our personality comes from our relationship with our parents. And parents are very unhealthy parents. They're responsible for the majority of the anxiety and depression of their children. All of us see them yelling, all of us see them screaming, yanking the kid up and down, you know, jerking the kid. All of us see that, and it's unhealthy. It leads to, Freud was right, uh, unresolved issues in childhood lead to adult problems. Absolutely 100% correct. Again, the positive message, the good news is that we can deal with those issues, put them in perspective, and start working towards a more pleasant life. Once we're a pleasant person, we can be happy in a marriage, and we can be happy in a marriage where our partner is also a happy person. If you want, if that's your goal, if you're in a distressed marriage and your goal is not to be in a distressed marriage, first of all, evaluate yourself and start fixing what is wrong, what's missing. As a young person, you had no problem with music, you had no problem with literature, you had no problem with going out and riding a bicycle or going to the park or hanging out with friends or, or hanging out with family. As a young person, you had no problem with that. Why is it that you have a problem with it as an adult? Because you have a job and it consumes your mind? I always say that attitude matters. You have a good attitude, you have a good life. Work is what it is because you're putting it in a negative perspective. And all of this contributes to marriage because in a marriage you need two healthy, healthy, mature grown-ups that are willing to be each other's intimacy. There's togetherness. There is that bond. With this person who I met, who I call my best friend in the whole world, she's right. It is a fusion of souls. But again, if you're a negative soul and your spouse is a negative soul, Used and double the negativity. If you have a happy marriage, this video is not for you. If you have a happy marriage, develop your own video essay and let the world know your wisdom, your intelligence. I happen to believe that we're capable of taking control of our lives, taking control of our thoughts, and doing what is necessary to have life be what we want it to be. We don't have to live in a bad marriage have to live in a distressed marriage. We don't have to live in a healthy and an unhealthy life. We can live in a very healthy life. It's our choice. And the issues that develop in marriage, uh, jealousy, self-consciousness, anger, rage, uh, having a sense that your intimacy needs are not met, you know, conflict, Yes, you need communication. Let's go ahead and say communication is, is, is a positive strategy. But you also need a, 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 an attitude, a full vision of life, that it's a healthy vision of life. Again, we deal with concerns to the extent they need to be dealt with, and to the extent that they are real concerns. If we're afraid of you know, impending doom, that something is going to go wrong, we'll sit down and figure out if, if there is something that you didn't do. You didn't check the oil in the car, you didn't deposit your paycheck, um, you forgot to meet your sister for lunch. But unrealistic fears, you don't need to continue to obsess on them. Does my spouse love me or doesn't love me? Sometimes that's nothing more than just something we're creating in our own mind. So health as an individual contributes to the health in a marriage. 
And the problems that manifest in a marriage manifest in the marriage because of illness, because of negativity. And we have to get to that point of health, of maturity. We need to leave that pettiness behind. And, and enjoy the company of the person we call our best friend. And enjoy what comes with that. You know, people are not, your spouse isn't sticking his or her nose in your business. You're part of your spouse's life, and your spouse wants to know what's going on in your life. That's healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. See, did I cover all the issues? I'm going to go ahead and say yes, but I know myself enough to know that after when I'm editing this and uploading it to YouTube, I'll, I'll remember to have said something else, and I'll just do another video and call it session two. Okay, so... Just as a quick review, be a person of positive ideation, think positive, be optimistic, have hope, value yourself because you have values. Remember that you're empowered because you can think, organize, plan, and act, okay? Uh, set goals and, uh, uh, and the objectives and recognize that every time you have a personal accomplishment, you grow in confidence, and as you grow in confidence, your self-esteem grows, and as you feel better, you're in the attitude of enjoying life, and the best way to enjoy life is to include simple healthy pleasures in your 24-hour day cycle and in your marriage first think of yourself make sure that you're a healthy person a person who laughs who, who's an enjoyable pleasant individual to be around with also recognize that your spouse may have issues that they need to do with themselves personal psychotherapy that should not complicate your marriage in marriage marriage is about intimacy it's a contract of intimacy it's a contract of love, it's a contract of romance, it's a contract of passion, it's a contract of sexual arousal and sexual satisfaction with your marriage partner. And if your goal is to have a happy marriage, then you have to work at one, being a happy person, and two, contributing to the happiness of your spouse.